Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, introduction to apoptosis, where we're specifically looking at the caspase enzymes. So we've seen in the previous video that caspase stands for cysteine-dependent aspartate-directed proteases, and these enzymes basically cleave proteins that these recognition sequences, which are DEVD, aspartate glutamate valine aspartate. Okay, right. So now what we want to discuss is how you actually activate caspases. Well, basically, caspases exist in the cytoplasm already, but they're not in the active form. Instead, they are what are known as pro-caspases, which I will draw like so. Okay, so they have three main portions, like this. They have this portion at the top, which I'm going to cut. I'm going to color all of these in different colors. So let's call um, this portion in. Let's color this portion in green in the middle. Okay, uh, so that's that middle portion, which is going to make the large subunit. And I wish I'd drawn it larger than this bottom one, which I'm coloring in orange here. So I'm just going to outline. I think I prefer just outlining with highlighters than colouring in. So this is a uh, procaspase, or at least it's a cartoon of a procaspase. Right. Okay. So, in order to actually make a functional caspase from a procaspase, you actually need two of them. In order to make a functional caspase from a procaspase, you need two procaspases. So let me draw another procaspase here. And I'm going to now draw that middle subunit bigger than the bottom subunit. So excuse the drawing that I've drawn these differently. I wish this one was the same as this one, basically. Okay. So here is my other pro-caspase. They should be the same, of course. Um, so imagine that this one is like this one. This one's the better one. Right. Okay. So to activate these pro-caspases, what's going to happen is that we're going to cut up these three portions, basically. So you're going to cut between the pink and the green, and you're going to cut between the green and the orange. And you're going to do this for both of these two subunits. Okay, now these two pink subunits, these two pink bits here, those are known as prodomains, and they are not used in the active caspase. So they go off and they're not going to be important to us ever again. So these are prodomains in pink. Right. So let me just label them up. Pro domains. They're involved in uh, keeping these pro caspases inactive. Okay, so pro domains. They both come off. Now we use these green bits and these orange bits to then make an active caspase enzyme. So we stick all four of them together like so. So the two mid. Well, we'll show this in a cartoon like so. So they form this um, this um, complex where you have these two green subunits, so these are the large subunits here, and then you have the two small subunits also in this complex. And this is how we're going to draw an active caspase enzyme here. Okay, so this is our active caspase, and it's made up of these two large subunits from the two procaspases. So this is a large subunit, large subunits, and it's made up of these two small subunits, which are in orange. These are the small subunits. Okay, and this now is the active caspase enzyme. So this is the active caspase enzyme. Okay, and the active caspase enzyme is then going to start cleaving uh, proteins at these recognition sequences, uh, and it's going to break these two peptide links on either side of that recognition sequence. Right, so that's the activation of caspases, and now a really important concept is how do we cleave uh, the prodomain from the large subunit, and how do we cleave the large subunit away from this small subunit, i.e. how are these proteolytic cleavages made? Well, a really important subunit, a uh, really important concept, sorry, is that these cleavings of the procaspases into uh, their subunits can be performed by other caspases which have been activated. Okay, so this is basically the concept of this positive feedback, that once you've activated some caspases, they can then chop up the procaspases, which can then assemble into other caspases. So you get this positive 
feedback cascade. So let me now outline for you the process of, well, a basic outline of uh, apoptosis. So some sort of signal comes in, okay? Apoptotic signal, okay? And what that is going to do is it's going to activate the first caspases. And these are known as initiator caspases. So it's going to uh, initiator caspases. Okay, so it's going to activate the initiator caspases. And these initiator caspases are then going to chop up the procaspases in the way I showed you over here. I, it's going to chop the prodomain away from the uh, large subunit and chop the large subunit away from the small subunit and let them assemble into active caspases. So the initiator caspases are going to assemble more caspases. So you're going to get this positive feedback and these new caspases, uh, caspases you are activating are called the executioner caspases. And basically they are going to chop up the proteins of the cell, uh, so the cytosolic proteins as well as nuclear proteins, and that is going to lead to the apoptosis of the cell. So this chopping up of all of the proteins of the cell, that's going to lead to apoptosis, basically. So that's uh, a very basic schematic of what's going to happen and what we're going to see happen in uh, later videos.